So I want to show you how to get that big, brassy, exciting Hollywood sound. The kind of sound that you might hear in those great classic Hollywood movie scores. You can actually get this effect with a standard romantic orchestra and some good orchestration. So I've been composing something for fun and consequently my beard is getting longer and my hair is getting wilder. I wanted to create a kind of John Williamsy or John Powerly sound, that kind of adventure Hollywood sound. So for this video, we're definitely on this side of the room. Sorry, Gustav. But here's how I'm gonna go about writing that sound. First, we're gonna start with the bass line. And I often start with the bass line because that really is the bed for everything else. Now in the passage I'm writing, the bass line wants to carry a lot of weight. So I'm gonna start with the tuba. And the tuba is our big, fat, comfy mattress on which the sound will lie. But what I've done is every note here is accented. Every note wants some impact. solid. Next, I'm going to add double bass, which will increase the weight of that accent with vroom, vroom. But it'll also increase the depth of the low end. And I'm also going to add some acidity, some real sharp acidity with a contrabassoon. I've got to fix the timings a bit, but you can already hear that it's adding more weight and a bit more substance to the sound. Now we want some impact. So I'm going to add the bass trombone. Now when you think of a trombone, remember that in some ways a trombone is kind of like a big trumpet. So when you hear a trumpet playing full out loud brassy, it has this amazing big sound that we call cuivre. And cuivre is just the French word for brass or brassy. But you can get the same big brassy effect on a trombone when it's playing full out. So that's where our real bass impact is gonna come from. A bass trombone blasting it out. Have a listen. What a difference that makes. Now, one more thing for our bass line for even more impact. We wanna add real body to it, even some punch. So I'm gonna add in our timpani and a bass drum going boom, boom, boom. Each note is gonna have that impact and punch. And here's probably the one place in this passage where I've cheated a little bit because I've let the timpani play every single note in the bass line. That's kind of cheating because the timpani couldn't necessarily play all of those notes without having to retune his drums. But you could easily rewrite this passage to avoid that. Now listen to the impact with timpani and bass drum. Again, it's not quite in time, but even then, it just adds this gravitas to the line. And bear in mind, at this stage, we're barely using any instruments. We're just using the natural instruments in a normal orchestra. And already, it's kind of sounding epic and exciting. Now, I've got my bass line, so now I'm going to add melody. And as this is a big tutti section, I'm going to let the horns sing the melody. But I'm only using four horns, not 12 or 16, just four. Good stuff. And now I'm going to double that with the first violins up an octave. And this just widens the sound, the texture of it. So have a listen. You'll hear the difference it makes. I hope you could hear that difference, just how it suddenly brightened up and widened the sound. So we've got our bass, we've got our melody. Now we want some chords. We want that filling in the middle of a sandwich. So I'm gonna add in trombone chords for my other trombones. By the way, I'm using three tenor trombones and one bass trombone. Trombone chords will add a real heroic solid middle. If you imagine trumpets as the high-pitched heroes, trombones can have a similar tone, but they're lower range. They have more body to them. They have more sort of heroic central body. So here are the trombone chords I use. I'll solo them first. Nice and simple. 
And I'm going to double those chords, those exact same trombone chords, in the clarinets. I'm using triple woodwind, which means three of each major woodwind group. And the clarinets will help to thicken out the trombone sound a bit. Clarinets and trombones can blend quite well, in the same way that oboes could help to thicken out the trumpets. I haven't added oboes to this section because I used the wind quite a lot earlier on in the piece, and I used the wind straight after this passage, so I'm letting the brass sing out for now, and then the wind will come back later. I find that sometimes if you over double everything, it actually loses character. If I doubled all of the brass and all of the wind, it would actually have less character. And I want that brassiness to shine through. So I'm going to let the brass mostly sing on their own. So let's listen to the whole thing with those trombone chords and the clarinets too. It's getting somewhere, I think. But we need a bit more body to it, that, that filling in the sandwich. So the cool thing is trombones and trumpets are really, you know, very much the same family. So over the top of those trombone chords, I can add trumpet chords to add, you know, make the chords even thicker, even bigger. And it'll give this thick body to the mix if all the trombones and all the trumpets are building up on this large chord. So have a listen. <laughs> Do you hear that? So I feel like we're really getting somewhere now. And what I want it to do is, towards the end of this passage, I want it to swoosh into the next section. It needs to feel like it's building to the climax and then it's going to go whoosh. So two quick tricks to have that swoosh effect. I'm going to add in suspended cymbals, the whoosh, that kind of effect. And I'm going to add in a harp glissando going bloom, like that, <laughs> like that. So have a listen. It is subtle, but you can hear this whoosh and this bloom effect. Like that. So finally, but importantly, I want a little bit more excitement. Actually, scratch a little bit. I want a lot more excitement. I want it to be even more uplifting. And luckily, I still have my strings. Second violins, violas, and cellos are all doing nothing. So I gave them this passage. <laughs> Right, so what they're basically doing is giving uplifting arpeggios, rising up and up, but they're also playing measured repetitions. They're going ba 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 instead of one note, ya ba 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 You want even more movement and excitement, so it's ba da ba ba two notes per note, if that makes sense. Ya da which makes it more exciting and it adds motion, excitement, momentum to the mix. So when you hear the whole thing, it'll be subtle. I don't want that to be a foreground feature. It'll just fade back into the mix, but it just adds a little something. Altogether, it'll sound like this. So you get the idea. It's a bit silly. It's a bit of a fun piece of music. I was just experimenting with orchestral sounds and how to get that Hollywood sound. But bear in mind that that is with almost no mixing or any tricks. That's just the natural orchestra sounds plus a bit of reverb. And yes, I could probably make it sound better with some careful mixing. But as John Powell said, if you simply write well for the instruments you have, you can get really good results without having to spend ages mixing or messing around or reaching for the 16 horn patch. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something which you can use yourself. If you want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can check out my other videos on composing and on music in general. And if you want to see more about writing music or making music or listening to music, then you can hit the subscribe button because that is exactly the kind of content that I make. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.